Hi and welcome to our training for adapting and modifying for children and young people with vision impairments. I'm Julie Everson Williams, a teacher of vision impairment for Peterborough City Council. The objective of this session is to understand the why, when and how of adapting and modifying materials and where to go to for further advice. There are a plethora of materials on the internet and I have included some useful websites in the final two slides. I have also included the contact details of Emma Green and I, the Teacher of Vision Impairments for Peterborough City Council. So I'd like you to take just a few moments to reflect on a student that you work with and what kind of materials you think they need adapting and why and maybe just uh, jot down a few ideas for me. So this is a horrible slide and trust me it's meant to be. I'd like you to just jot down a few ideas of what's horrible about it, what do you think is wrong and what would you do to modify it to make it more accessible. So we want to adapt and modify materials to ensure that there is equitable access within the class and as much as possible that children are able to access the same kind of materials as their peers so that they are still fully included in sessions. It's important that we understand if we are introducing a new concept or some new vocabulary that the modification might actually be that they have some real object or have a real experience to help them understand. We would like our children to be as independent as possible and so sometimes we might supply them with an iPad or a laptop in order to help them to access information. However, technology isn't going to solve all problems and if you have a piece of information that is too cluttered or is not good quality print, then just making it larger on an iPad is not going to help. Similarly, blowing things up on a photocopier does not solve all problems. Generally, we would say that just blowing it up on a photocopier makes the clarity of the text or the picture harder to access. So if you think about if you've taken a photo and you've tried to enlarge it, as you enlarge it, it becomes more pixelated, which obviously reduces the clarity. For someone with a vision impairment, this is very difficult then to access. A3 is more difficult to access than A4 for scanning and retrieval purposes. And so we would not generally recommend just blowing things up on a photocopier. So some things need to be adapted and modified because just making them larger is not going to help. If the text is too small or there's too much clutter, then it causes so much fatigue. I can read size five font, but I wouldn't want to do it all day because I know that I would have a headache by the end of the day and I would not be feeling very well. This is exactly the same for student with vision impairments if we don't provide text in the at the right size and with the all the accessibility features in there then they do become exhausted it's also important that we adapt and modify in a way to make it their normal way of working for exam access arrangements and it's never too early to think about exam access arrangements it's important for those taking exams to look at past exam papers to see what adaptations and modifications might be made so that they students are used to those and it's not a shock for them. They need to have equal opportunity to access the exam in the format that it will be delivered in. Even at key stage one, key stage two, although there might not be quite so many exams, we still need to think that work does need to be adapted and modified in order to make it accessible for students with vision impairments. 
So you're about to start adapting a piece of work for a student. What is it that you need to know before you start that adaptation? Just jot down two or three ideas of what you think it's really important to know prior to doing that work. So before you start adapting a piece of work, it's really important that you understand a child's vision impairment and how it impacts them. It's important to read the report from the QTVI to make sure that you understand font sizes, colours and things like that. Whoever is adapting the work must be clear of the learning objective and ensure that it maintains its integrity when the work is adapted and modified. Sometimes the work person planning the lesson might be a teacher, but the person adapting the materials might be a teaching assistant. So it's really important that there's clear communication between the two to ensure that the learning objective is met. It's also important to try and make sure that however the work is adapted and modified, it is as inclusive as possible and as close to the peer groups work as possible so that they feel part of the group. If they feel like they're doing some work that is completely different, it often causes difficulties and will affect their emotional well-being. So this slide is fairly self-explanatory. If it looks good, it prob probably isn't, which makes it very easy for uh, people in the VI team as when we're making PowerPoints, we don't have to think about borders, designs, animations, transitions, all of those kind of things, because as we say, less is more. Keep it simple. So it's important to remember that not all adaptations and modifications have to be done on paper. Sometimes it might be using real materials or objects. It might be, for example, having a ball with a bell in it for PE. Uh, so that the child can access the lesson as their peers can. It also doesn't have to be complicated. So sometimes on a graph, it might be just having a piece of blue tack to show where a point is on a graph, just emphasising it. Again, it's really important to understand the vision impairment of the child to know what will work and what won't. The individual reports are key to making adaptations work. So you need to adapt and modify any materials which are not accessible to a student with vision impairment. I'm going to go through some of the examples now. If you'd like specific advice about a specific lesson or an individual child, then please contact Emma or I uh, for more individual advice. When modifying text, avoid excess information. Look at what's really needed and get rid of the rest. Avoid boxes and tables, mind maps and spider diagrams, as these can be very difficult to follow. Headings may be listed and repeated. Ordered lists and bullet points are generally much easier to follow. Screen readers also find boxes and tables hard to read. and They do struggle with PDFs, so PDFs can be accessed using an app called Seeing AI. Take a photo of the PDF and the app will read out the content to you. Most computers and iPads have built-in accessibility tools, including VoiceOver, and this can be invaluable for accessing text. RNIB Bookshare is very useful in that you can download books for anyone with a print disability vision impairment or dyslexia. However, it should be said that it does not automatically adapt and modify these materials. Adaptations may still be needed. An app such as Dolphin Easy Reader can help text be easier to access. Clear Vision and Living Paintings are two websites that are worth investigating for other options of how to find accessible books. So lots of texts these days are visually exciting and they are motivating for students. However, they can be really quite difficult to access visually. So just looking at this 
page here from a book about Robin Hood, what would you do to make this more accessible? So as you can see, lots of the humour is actually in the pictures, but the writing in the pictures is not very accessible. It is actually quite tiny. However, you don't want to lose that engagement of the humour for the child. So it would be important to give a verbal commentary and describe these pictures and what's going on. So there are some examples here of how to adapt and modify diagrams and pictures. It is worth noting that if you are using tactile diagrams, children do need to be taught how to access information from them. They need to learn how to read a picture or a diagram. So here's an example from a history exam paper. Just think about what might be difficult to access and how you might make it more accessible. And here is the modified question. It's really important that every subject teacher knows how things may be adapted and modified for exams in their subject. You can go to the individual exam board's websites and see past papers that have been modified and adapted. And there's also an excellent book by the RNIB called Well Prepared. There's a link at the end of this presentation, which gives you examples of how things might be adapted and modified. As you can see from this question, the learning objective is still there. Using a source document is an important part of history. However, the picture has been described but without giving the answer. Just because something is easier to access doesn't mean that it should be easier. So here's another example of a modified question from a science exam paper. As you can see, it's very similar. The um, tube of glue has been taken out just to focus uh, the eyes on the symbols, which are the main objective of the question. It's important to note that 3D diagrams can be very difficult to access and sometimes just making them 2D is all that's needed in order to make the question more visually accessible. So just having a look at this slide, I'd like you to think about what would be the most appropriate way to modify the question. And I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Just think about what's really necessary and what is really needed and essentially what is the objective of the question. And here on the left, you can see the modified question. Obviously, the picture of the bicycle has been taken out as it's not necessary. Uh, the rest of the question remains largely unchanged. When using demonstrations or videos, it's very important to consider the position of the child, where they are in the classroom, how close they are to the person who's demonstrating. Obviously, you need to think about your individual child and their needs because it might be that they need to be either one side or straight in front of the person demonstrating. It's important to have a verbal commentary of what is happening. This can obviously be this can be done by a TA or it can be done uh, through audio description on a video. Sometimes it might be worth sending the video prior to the lesson so the student has the opportunity to listen to the audit version with the verbal commentary 
so they are prepared for what will happen in the lesson. It's important to take time to consolidate what has happened in the video or demonstration, maybe ask questions to ensure understanding and pause, especially if it's a long piece of video, pause and just take time to assimilate all the information that's been given. Again, maybe asking questions to ensure that the information has been assimilated correctly. If there is something that's being passed around or is being demonstrated at the front, maybe it's a small piece of equipment and how to use it, it can be worth uh, supplying the child with their own resources so that they can touch and feel uh, whatever the, the new resource is. And as it's being talked about, they have their own version so that they understand what it is that's being demonstrated. So once you've adapted a modified work, it's really important that children learn how to store that work and how they can retrieve it. So it may be that they have things stored on their computers or iPads and they need to learn how to do that independently. Being adept at using games on an iPad like they might do at home is not the same as using it for education and it's important that we spend some time teaching them how to retrieve things. It's also important that if you've made a tactile book or you've made a tactile diagram they know where that's kept as it might not necessarily be in the same place as the peers keep their work. A, a large adapted map, for example, might not be kept in their exercise book, but they might need to go back to it to revise or consolidate understanding. Please remember that A4 is easier to scan and it's easier for storing and retrieving information. This training is generic and hasn't focused on any particular individual or any specific subject. If you would like more specific advice or advice about a particular individual, please contact Emma or I. We will be running more training throughout the year. We have a full programme of training events. And if you would like more information on this, please contact either Emma or I or the VI Hub at Arthur Mellows.